Let's say you have a simple equation like this. Solving for x here is pretty easy. It just involves a little bit of arithmetic. Now let's say you have two related equations like this. Now in this case, it's still pretty easy to solve. You would first solve for y and then plug in y here and then you can solve for x with a bit of arithmetic. Now imagine you have this system of equations. This is no longer trivial to solve. You could try coming up with guesses and that might work for some simple problems, but in general you need a better method, a more algorithmic approach to solving systems of equations like this. So the major goal of this section of the course is to teach you matrix methods to solve systems of equations. In this video I will provide an introduction to some conceptual ideas and I'll show you a geometric interpretation of these kinds of systems of equations. And I will also set things up for a geometric justification for Gaussian elimination. And Gaussian elimination is one of the main ways to solve systems of equations. I will start by showing you how to interpret equations and systems of equations geometrically. So basically you need to learn how to view an equation like this or a system of equations as geometric objects like points, lines, or planes. So you know that to plot a line in R2, you need two variables. Typically they would be called x and y, or maybe x1 and x2, but here you see only an x. So this is not an equation for a line. It's an equation for a point. It's a point on a one-dimensional subspace, which we can call the real number line. You cannot vary the solution for x. The solution for x just has one fixed value at exactly this location. But an equation like this has two variables, x and y. So its solution is a line in R2. Here you see the graph. And the idea is that this line is some infinitely long one-dimensional subset that's embedded in R2. Now notice that I call this a subset and not a subspace. The reason is that this set of points, it's an infinitely long set of points, but it doesn't include the origin. So technically, this is not a subspace. If I got rid of this two here, it would be a valid subspace. But anyway, that's not so relevant here. The point is that any point on this line is a valid solution to this equation. And furthermore, any point not on this line is not a solution to this equation. And you can confirm this yourself by picking some random numbers around here, some random points, and plugging them in, and you'll see that this equation will not hold. So that means that the solution to this equation is not just a single point. It's any point on this line, which also means any scalar multiple of any solution that's already on the line. So the solution to this problem comes from taking any basis vector for this subset, the subset that is spanned by that basis. So I can multiply this entire equation by some constant, let's say 2 or 19.5, and the solution will be the same. Now let's think about what happens with two equations. So here is a second equation. And the question is, what values of x and y will solve simultaneously both of these equations. Or maybe there is no solution. Well, if one equation is a line, then two equations is two lines. This is still an R2, we have two variables. So each of these is a line. So geometrically, to solve this system of equations, what you have to do is plot the two lines corresponding to the two equations and see where they intersect. And that point of intersection is the solution to both equations. Now, if these lines don't intersect, then it means that each equation separately has an infinite line of solutions. But as a system, there is no solution. So for this equation, the intersection is at coordinates x is 4 over 3 and y is 8 thirds. If you like, you can pause the video here plug in these solutions into these two equations and confirm that this solution set simultaneously solves both of these equations. It's not a super beautiful integer solution, but 
I actually made up the problem before figuring out the solution, so that's just how it goes. Here are two complementary pictures of a solution to a system of equations. Algebraically, the solution is a pair of numbers that makes both equations true. Geometrically, the solution is a point where the two lines intersect. Now there's something interesting that you can do with a system of equations like this, which you cannot do with separate equations. And what you can do here is add multiples of one equation to the other. And the solution, it turns out, is the same. Now I'll give you a quick demonstration of this. What I'm going to do is add 2 times the first equation to the second equation. So multiply this by 2 and add that to this. And then I will subtract this equation, the original equation, not add it to this. Subtract this original equation from this equation. That gives me a new set of, or a new system of equations, and that looks like this. This is a convenient way to rewrite these equations because now there's no y in this equation and there's no x in this equation. I encourage you to take a minute and work through the arithmetic. Plug in the same solution that worked in this system and confirm for yourself that that solution is also valid for this system. This system might at first seem like it's a different system from the one on the previous slide. But what does this mean geometrically? It means that the lines themselves have moved around, but the intersection of those lines stays put. So here are the two new lines. The slopes are different, as are the intercepts. In fact, what my little calculation here did was orthogonalize this system, which was actually just serendipity. I didn't plan that in advance before making this slide. But the important thing is that the point of intersection is exactly the same. Now I'd like to show you this kind of procedure in MATLAB. This is a great opportunity to use MATLAB as a tool to give you real geometric intuition into what it means for a system of equations to be represented geometrically. So here's our equation. a times y equals b times x plus c. Now for this kind of template equation, I have two solutions or two equations, and these numbers here indicate the coefficients a, b, and c. So the equation that this line is representing is y equals 2x plus 1. And this one is representing 2y equals x plus 3. So there's some code in this script that you might not be initially familiar with. Basically, I'm going to generate a line using equations. So this is an equation of x. x is a dependent variable. And it's going to be y equals the second coefficient times x plus the third coefficient. And all of that is divided by the first coefficient. So essentially what that's saying is y equals bx plus c and all of that divided by a. That's what this code means here. So you don't see the y equals. That's implicit. That's actually the output of this function. And the input into this function is variable x. And the form of the function is bx plus y. And all that is divided by a. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. If you'd like more instruction for how to produce and work with anonymous functions, this is called an anonymous function here then you can consider taking my MATLAB course called Master MATLAB Through Guided Problem Solving. In this case, for this course, all you need to know is that this implements a function that will draw a line given these coefficients for this equation form. So what does the rest of this code do? So we loop over 10 times. Here's a loop that goes over 10 times. And what I do is generate an equation. So this is equation one, and this is equation two. The O here stands for original. And what I'm doing here is setting equation one to be equal to itself plus some random number times equation two. I hope you can see that this is exactly what I did in the slides. In that slide, so I set equation two to be itself plus two times equation one. And I set equation one to be itself plus one times equation two. So here I'm doing the same thing just with random numbers. Okay, so now I'm going to run this cell. 
And what you can see is that these two systems of equations, they're changing on every iteration. So it plots the, co it plots the lines and then it waits for one second so we can have a look at it. It plots those adjusted equations. So you can see the lines differ each time. However, the solution remains the same. The solution is always a dot that's right here. So even though it looks like these individual systems are changing, their intersection remains the same, even though I'm coming up with totally random ways of combining them. I want to do another example in R3 that I hope will build even more intuition about the geometric interpretation of a system of equations. So here we are in R3. Here is the general form of the problem that we are trying to solve, or the, the general the template for this equation. It's AZ equals BX plus CY plus D. So, and then these are the coefficients. And again, here I do the same trick. I set equation one to be itself plus some random number times equation two. And here I'm using the MATLAB function f plot three to generate the lines. It is a little bit more confusing the way I've set up this anonymous function in here, but it has generally the same form as what I showed previously with R2. Again, you don't need to worry about the details of the code. If this is a little bit more advanced than you are comfortable with in terms of programming, don't worry about it. The point is not the programming. The point is the concepts that you will see in the graphs here. So let's run this cell. And you can see again, it's two lines in three dimensions. And although the two lines are changing, the intercepts and slopes are changing, the orientations of the lines are changing, but their solution is still a fixed point here. So now that last one looked like it changed, but that's actually just because I have this uh, plotting uh, aesthetics code here after the loop. So here you see the coordinate axes for this 3D space, and this is the solution. And what I'm going to do now is comment out this line, clear all, to clear the axis. So that means all of these lines, so these pairs of lines, at each iteration are going to be plotted on top of each other. So now you see a bunch of different solutions appearing. Uh, sorry, the solution is always the same, a bunch of different systems appearing. And it's quite interesting to look at this. One thing you notice is that all these lines lie on a plane. And that shouldn't be too surprising. We are in R3, but we have only two equations. In the next several videos, you will learn how to convert a system of equations into a matrix equation. And then you'll see that this system is actually a rank two matrix. So this system can be represented by a rank two matrix that is in R3. So that's why we get a plane for all these possible lines. However, the solution is still just a point, even though I keep changing the equations themselves each time I run through this loop. The validity of adding multiples of one equation to another is a powerful tool that will help us solve systems of equations. And that is the key insight into Gaussian elimination, which in turn is the key stepping stone to concepts like pivots and reduced row echelon form. So in this video, I showed you the algebraic and geometric interpretations of systems of equations. I showed you that you can scalar multiply and add different equations as long as those equations are validly in the same system. Now you might not have noticed explicitly that all the equations in this video were linear, but indeed there I didn't show anything like x squared or the log of y or any nonlinearities on these variables. This is linear algebra, so these equations have to be linear in the variables. They don't have to be linear in these terms. You could have log of 2. Well, it's, that wouldn't make this system nonlinear. What would make this system nonlinear is if this were log of x or y cubed. 